Good morning. Welcome to home worship on this Sunday morning. As we prepare to worship God, let us call ourselves to worship. Let us offer a spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be Peace to God. God. Thanks be to God. Let us also call ourselves to confession. Whoever believes in Christ will not be put to shame. Confident in this promise, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word offers freedom from sin, but we confess that we have not obeyed your word. We have harbored malice toward our enemies. We have been deceitful in our relationships. We have been insincere in our commitments. Through gossip, we have slandered our friends. Forgive us our sins and lead us to genuine repentance. Help your children long for your pure spiritual milk that we may grow into the joy of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Beloved, once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to Glory God, God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. World without end, without end, darling. World without end, without end, darling. World without end, without end, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Okay, Maureen, you ready to read your? Yeah. Almighty God, in Christ you have showed us the way, revealed to us your truth, and offered to us everlasting life. Keep our eyes upon him that we may see your path more clearly, know your truth more fully, and receive your life more abundantly through Christ who dwells with you in the Holy Spirit in eternal glory. Amen. Lord, as we listen to your holy word, Open our hearts to the power of your Spirit. Call us out of darkness and lead us into your marvelous light. Amen. Amen. This morning's reading from the fifth Sunday of Easter and from a revised, new Revised Standard Version of the Bible is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. This is early in the Last Supper discourse between Jesus and his apostles. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. 
Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. In every beginning, there's also an ending. And the disciples are sitting in one of these liminal spaces right at this time. They're filled with anxiety. They're troubled. They're in Jerusalem. They know that something's about to happen, but they're not exactly sure what. And so when Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled, I have to imagine that they're having a, a hard time doing this, as if they could will their hearts not to be troubled, as if they could will away their anxiety. Jesus had washed their feet. He had told them about what was to come. He told them that one of them would betray him and that he would be left alone. And yet he's still trying to soothe them in the midst of all of this. Could they will themselves out of fear? Could they really not let their hearts be troubled? Is this really balm? And so they stop and they listen much more closely. Jesus, like any good leader, will not let anyone who follows him go through something he's not willing to go through himself. And they know that wherever Jesus has led them, Jesus has been right there beside them. They know that Jesus is trustworthy. And then he starts with this wedding image. It actually is a wedding image. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place before you. This is what the bridegroom did before welcoming the bride into his home. The bridegroom went ahead and prepared a place in his home, made room for this new member of his family, made a way for his larger extended family to welcome a new person, a new member of the family. And so Jesus goes to make room, even though he's told them that some may disappoint him, some will fall short. He says he makes room for all who believe. There's a spaciousness in God's family. There's a roominess in God's household. There's room for all. And Jesus then goes on to give them a, a road map of sorts. He says, you can know God because you know me. And we're so interconnected that it'd be hard for you not to know God. You already know me, so you know God. Vis-a-vis, -vis, you know God. And the disciples, even if they're confused by his words, he gives them something else. He says, if you, can't, if you can't wrap your heads around these words, then trust in my works. You've seen my works. You've worked with me. 
you know how to show God's love. Those works are not only what I've done here, but you'll do even greater in my name, he tells the disciples. But perhaps they don't know what that means right now. Right now, all they can feel is the loss. They will find out soon enough, and we know as post-Easter people, that the messianic hope that they had imagined in Jesus is not exactly what they had envisioned. Jesus doesn't come with an army to conquer the conquerors. Jesus doesn't come with a sword, but with a cross. And when Jesus promises a new world, it's a new, it's a new that they can't even imagine. But they can trust in who Jesus is. They can trust in the works that Jesus has done. And the truth is now we stand in that liminal space. We are troubled. We are anxious. We can't imagine what the new normal will bring. We may even despair. And it's a hard time. We've been separated from those outside of our household for going on two months now. We watch the news and we're disturbed. We're disturbed by the lack of justice in our larger communities. We're disturbed that our brothers and sisters in the African American community can't even exercise without worrying about their lives. And we pray for the family of Ahmaud um, Aubrey as they mourn his loss on his birthday, yes, uh, on Friday. We see unrest even in our own areas as people have different ideas about how the state should open back up. We're worried, we're troubled about economic unrest. We're worried, we're troubled about mental health consequences. We're worried about so many things. And when Jesus promises a, a place for us in God's house, it sounds like sort of an end times type of hope. In fact, we may be most used to hearing these words as we stand in a place of mourning, mourning losses around us, a reminder that Jesus has prepared a house or a place for us. But it's not just an end times hope. It's a hope even for today. My friend and uh, one of my former pastors, Lindsay Armstrong, wrote this. We don't understand what Jesus means when he says, in my father's house there are many dwelling places, until we make room for placeless people, international students, internally displaced persons, refugees, unhoused people, dreamers, addicts, differently abled people, foster children, domestic abuse victims, ignored or abused elderly folks, and too many others. And it was when I read these words that Lindsay wrote that I started to realize that we know how trustworthy God is. We can feel some hope in our anxiety because our community is spacious. Our community knows how to make space for all of God's people. Our community knows how to be God's people and to share God's love. And so, in the midst of seeking out trust, trustworthy news sources, I've also sought the good. And I've found it so much in this community. There's so much space because we refuse to believe that we have the only experience worth attention. We listen, we share love in any way we possibly can. 
My daughter has felt her community of her school gather around as she's received postcards, not only from her wonderful classroom teachers and her case manager and her specials teachers and those who um, help her with her um, with speech therapy and occupational therapy, but she's also received notes from paraprofessionals in the lunchroom, in the classroom, and everywhere else. And I know that she's not the only kid, because when she had her, her classroom Google um, Hangouts meeting the other day, several of the other kids said to one of the paraprofessionals there, I got your postcard today. So the school community is reaching out. The school community is reminding our kids that their beloved school community hasn't forgotten them. Their beloved school community still surrounds them in love. And then I saw it in a couple of other stories this week. When the Monroe Kiwanis partnered with United Way of Monroe and tried to pull some financial resources to help those in most need in the community. When it wasn't about who did it, individually getting credit, but working together to make sure that everyone has enough. Or when the high school FFA purchased 200 gallons of milk from a local dairy and distributed them to families who are struggling the most with food insecurity. Or when a local dairy donated yogurt as part of the healthy meals that are going to families throughout the community. These are all places where God's love is revealed. Or even a couple of nights ago, there was a lost dog in the community, and people who knew the person with the lost dog and those who did not were out searching, were out sharing their love in a powerful way. Beloved, you know how to live for and with one another. You know how to live in God's way. And so, as you can trust in living in Christ's manner, in living in Christ's walk, in living in Christ's way, you can also trust that Christ is with us. We act, live, work, and love because who we, of who we are in Christ. And you are constantly doing this. You as a community are constantly doing this. You're constantly discerning who might be left out and how to graciously include you're always figuring out a way to make room. And Christ has made room for you. Christ has opened your hearts, has opened your minds, has opened your spirits, and poured in the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit so that we can share this love throughout the community. Thanks be to God for the love that you show and continue to show. Amen. Amen. Beloved, let us pray together. Let us unite our hearts in prayer, saying, God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, for all who profess and honor the risen Lord, May we be faithful to their witness and courageous in their testimony to the way of Jesus. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. prayer. For pastors, teachers, doctors, nurses, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, they may seek to build the church upon Christ, the cornerstone, and humbly lead in faithful service. God of resurrection, Hear our, our prayer. Prayer. Hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and its leaders, mm -hmm. that all nations may dwell in peace 
and all people may dwell in peace, that good will prevail over strife, and that people of faith may freely worship as their hearts direct. God of resurrection, hear, hear, our, our, prayer. Prayer. hear our prayer. For rain and sun in proper measure, for abundant food and water for all who dwell upon the earth. God of resurrection, hear, hear, our, our, prayer. Prayer. hear our prayer. For the sick and those in need, and for all who are oppressed by wounds of the soul. God of resurrection, hear, hear, our, our, prayer. Prayer. hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that we may live together in unity, and that strangers among us may find us to be hospitable friends. God of resurrection, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayer. For our enemies, that their sins may be forgiven them, and that they may find your peace. God of resurrection, hear, hear, our, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Almighty God, your Son promised to grant whatever we ask in his name. By your Holy Spirit, empower us to minister to the world as his faithful disciples, that our work may testify to what we pray and show forth your eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy And serve in the name of our risen Lord. And as you go, may the love of God, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Spirit be with us now and always. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.